Warning, the following video contains explicit language which may be offensive to some viewers or inappropriate for children. The content within this video is intended for mature audiences only. Hello, and welcome to this um, video. This is going to be Rabbits, Season 2, Episode 4, Part 1, The Call of the Void. Um, it is, we're getting into it. Um, I must apologize again for not being able to keep to any regular schedule here lately um, so um, until I get my stuff together and get back on a regular posting schedule we're just gonna have to I'm gonna have to try to get all that together um, so without further ado let's get into this we're going to need to stay sharp if we end up finding the traveler. A little bit different audio in the uh, intro this time. You believe your friend was playing rabbits? Playing rabbits. She started seeing mysterious men in gray. What's going to happen then? We're going to play his game. Yes, we are. Um, so yeah, it's it's going. Just up ahead. Once you open the door, you can take off the blindfold. What do you know about chaos theory? The streets were red, then black with blood. 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 That sounds poetic. Oh, that sounds like rabbits. Well, you have the intermingling of audio from season one and some added stuff for season two. Where are you now? The bottom line isn't money or purpose. It's inspiration. Are we still going to have sex? I'm afraid not. A lot of people don't understand the power they're dealing with. Yeah, um... I love, I love that. Actually, the episode, the whole build-up, the episode in which that line occurs, the, the are we still going to have sex line, in the, the particular episode in season one in which that happens is uh, I, j I just like to build up the, the, the cluelessness of the guy who makes that statement I need you to promise me you'll only use these cards for good and there we go a little bit of the season two you When I was around 15 years old, my parents took me to a rotating restaurant high above the city. There was an observation deck surrounding the restaurant proper. <coughs> that would be in the Space Needle, or I presume in the Space Needle. Um, when I was a kid, my mom's family was from Seattle, Washington, and there was a couple times we went on vacation and visited that we went into the, the, the restaurant at the top of the Space Needle. It was kind of cool. Very expensive, but very cool. And I remember stepping out onto that thick glass floor and looking down at the city. It felt like I was at least a mile up in the air. There was a very secure guardrail. But in that moment, after staring down for a second or two, I had the urge to jump. Now, I don't suffer from, you know, heights or anything, you know, fear of heights, but still, I've never, I've never wanted to jump from something really high. 
Though I did jump out of a perfectly good airplane once. That was fun though. But that was controlled and all kinds of stuff went in with it. Um, but just to, to, to be standing like that, mm, nope, thought never crossed my mind. Now, I would never jump. It's completely irrational, but it was just a strange urge that popped unbidden into my mind. And I don't know. Um, I don't know if there, there are people out there that have had any kind of thoughts like that. I've never, though I do like free fall. I like roller coasters or anything that gives you that sensation of, I could see the, the, the allure of free fall being prompting a thought like that, but just the knowledge of that sudden stop at the end would, would probably negate it for me. It felt scary that first time I remember it happening. Or it could be a psychological urge for adventure too. That that whole the you want to long for something that's adventurous, and that's and at that particular time, it may that's how it manifested itself. Could be. In the Pacific Northwest, I take a lot of ferries, and occasionally, while staring down at the churning water below, I've once again felt the urge to jump. A small burst of relief passes through me as I realize there's no way I'm going to jump, and I move on with my life. There again, that may be the, the, the call to adventure at some you know, subconscious or sub-level within the brain or something, which may lead her to play something, I don't know, a game, a real-life RPG called Rabbits. You, you know, you never know. The French have a name for this strange sensation. It's called Le Pelle de Vide. Translated into English, it means the call of the void. It's the kind of thing most of us experience, but none of us really talk about. I guess the call to the void would be a good... I like the French, though. The French language has always fascinated me, though. So, the, the, the call to the void, or call to adventure. But there have been research studies. In a study from Miami University, co-authored by April Smith, this phenomenon, referred to scientifically speaking as the high place phenomenon, is delved into in detail. The study discovered that more than half of us have experienced aspects of the call of the void, but that it's really nothing to worry about. Some thoughts are just static. The most probable explanation is that we're worried about the height, and our brains rationalize that. If we're worried, we must have wanted to jump. Like one possible explanation for deja vu, our minds are twisting things around in less than a millisecond, resulting in our believing that the second thought actually came first. Now that is a pretty interesting um, hypothesis. Um, after I had listened to this episode the first time when I was just kind of binge, binging rabbits, um, yeah, that's kind of a interesting hypothesis. It's something I, I, I look at and think about from time to time. It's, it's, it's a great mind exercise. Well, this whole series, the season one, season two, and both novels, that's what they, 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 they have all these little thought exercises within them that, that could be played out in, in various different ways. It's it's just fascinating how that how that goes and works. How the human brain puts stuff together like that. So, in other words, the call of the void is nothing more than a trick of the mind, or is it? 
or is it your subconscious trying to relay information to the conscious the only way it knows how? Something to think about. This is part of a genre of psychology referred to as intrusive thoughts. And this podcast isn't qualified to offer any sort of advice on somebody experiencing genuinely suicidal thoughts. If you are having those feelings, please get in touch with a mental health care professional. Or I like that PSA. I like how they work that PSA into the show, into the weaving it into there, which is a good PSA to have. Or talk to your friends and family immediately. Intrusive thoughts. Most of us have them. You are driving down the road and you think about swerving into danger. Or you're staring at a friend and you think about kissing them. Or maybe you just feel like screaming at the top of your lungs at the most random time. Now, the, the screaming at the top of your lungs at a random time, I've done that. I've been out on, my, out on the property just doing something or, or doing usually it's something monotonous like cutting up dead wood or or or, or, or digging out an area or something something where where the labor is basically fairly monotonous or you're doing the same thing over and over again and i've i've had that particular thought so it's it's interesting the the the, the that you just Stop what you're doing and just look up at the sky and scream. It usually makes you feel better. At least makes me feel better. Although most of us have never and would never act on these impulses, they can unnerve and upset us when they happen. And again, if these types of thoughts become a genuine problem, you need to talk to somebody about them right away. And still with the PSA, I like that. I like how they, they're, they're telling a story that has dire implications and dire real world things, if emulated. But they also weave the, the, the PSA in of if you're, ha if in, if you're IRL or in real life, having these kind of idolate these idle thoughts or whatever that to seek help i like that it's i didn't notice it so much when i listened to it the first time but going through and breaking it down like this it's 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 kind of stands out but then again this is what makes this series and the other series done uh by pra and uh mental beats well so fascinating because they they have the skill set to do things like that so what do impulsive or intrusive thinking and the call of the void have to do with rabbits well i'm getting to that during my yes she will be getting to that but we have a story to tell we've got to flush things out and that's another thing that they do well by by presenting this as most of the audio of somebody in a studio broadcasting it just it worked for somehow it just works um i don't think it would be interesting to do this live action or even animation that would be interesting because I don't know I think it might it might be interesting but it would be hard to do because we all on audio or something like this or something that's a non-visual medium like reading or audio or what have you our brains have a way we our brains have constructed what the characters look like how they dress and when somebody puts that into a a visual form i.e animation live action what have you you're getting their interpretation 
what they think and it may or may not which can lead which is re one of the reasons why you're having the arguments you're having in your long-standing fandom star trek star wars um dune um stargate um all these doctor who even all these 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 generational fandoms when something new comes out there's always a portion that reacts negatively to it because it's not what how they picture it between their ears so it's just one of those things as much as i think it would be cool to do a visual representation of rabbits i think at the same time it would diminish the the diminish it because me listening to it my head canon the details are going to be filled in it's different or slightly different or completely different than say you listening to this or going to the website and which i recommend links in the description below um and listening to it because your experiences your life what you do how you do things and your knowledge of say the seattle washington oregon northern california area is going to impact that so it's just it's just crazy it's it's one of those things where it's i'm on the fence my research into path cards i came across a recording of a path card session and subsequent interview the voices on the recording belong to a research scientist named zoe yanich and a male subject she refers to as subject 612. there was no detailed information on where or under what circumstances the session had been conducted the only notes I was able to find connected to the session indicated that Dr. Yanich was a research scientist and that the session had been conducted somewhere in the Pacific Northwest. That's it. I'm going to play that recording for you now. And I think we'll go ahead and call this here good for this video simply because I want to hit the next video with this recording and go through and be able to expound upon it a little bit more um so until next time everyone be good be a good human be good to other humans peace hey it's 10 p.m do you know where your children are